Well, this is my talk uh, about, or intended to be my talk about my 16 years of the 25 years that Perl now has on its you know, age graph. Um, and it was intended to be a healthy schizophrenic view on Perl because I happen to be both Perl dead, to keep my mind sane, and a well, upper management guy, as they say. So, about me, you can put it in a Basically, I'm a computer science, Perl dev, management guy, 16 years of Perl experience, and I mean Perl experience, not just I've heard about Perl 16 years ago. Actually, I heard about Perl and learned it on a weekend, a little bit of it, 17 years ago, but it's a completely different story. Um, Maybe today evening, when you can raise one glass or two, I will be able to tell you. Um, so my first experience was I had to do um, components database at SUSE, Linux vendor. Uh, what is compatible with Linux, what not, was CDB, SUSE DE, pre, 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 predecessor of today's hardware database they use. And it was kind of, uh, I cannot do the Rowan Atkinson thing, it's, I'm annoyed, so, but it was, so do I really have to use Perl? Yes, you have, so I did it. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. At that time, I was more of a C, C++ guy. I had to use Perl, and I started using Perl. started using Perl, then soon after, I got some slaves <laughs> who had to do what I said, so, I had 15 years of management, I was manager, I was managing these people, telling them what they shall do. And 12 years of that, upper management, that is, uh, you know, you manage managers. Um, for various reasons, I love Perl and I will prove it to you now. So I was born 42 years ago today. And uh, when my wife asked me, hey, what do you want to do on your birthday? I said, well, I plan to go to London. Oh, how romantic. And <laughs> Stop. I plan to go to London. <laughs> so here I am. And um, I think I have an important message. Happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> Maybe today you can raise one glass of tea. So, therefore, on short notice, the talk has been renamed 42, the answer to Pearl, mental disorders and everything. Okay, a problem. There's a problem, yes, there always is. Maybe different than you think, though. Start with a quote. Your problem is not technology, the problem is you. If, you know, if a super intelligent extraterrestrial tells you this shortly before he intends to eradicate the whole human race, uh, you should listen. And so should, I think, we, because Pearl has several problems and the last of them is technology. Another quote from Ovid, not the old one, but our Ovid, Curtis Ovid Poe, <laughs> probably not his own, but he stated it in his keynote on the YPC EU in Frankfurt, bad strategy beats no strategy. Which means, if you extrapolate it, um, you're lucky if you have a great strategy, yeah, for a company or for some project or so. And then, if you have a bad strategy, you're basically sort of fucked up, and the poorest guys have no strategy. That's the problem. There may be a self-delusion. Um, Pearl has no strategy. Not at all. Nothing. Nothing. Um, of course it hasn't. It has not even a goal. Yeah. Whatever formulation it may have. There is no goal. Um, the strategy is basically just a vehicle, a navigation plan to get you to your goal. If you have no goal, what would you like to navigate? So, some may have had the urge to say, what the heck, we have a strategy, there is a roadmap for 518 and beyond. No, no strategy. That may be some technical intentions or backlog or to do or whatever. It's no strategy. Let's look at some of the megalomanic guys. Java. I wrote here Java has a trivial but effective strategy. 
it's not completely true because I should have said Oracle has a <laughs> trivial but effective strategy in Java, but you're Perl guys, you know what I mean. Um, it has a bad tone, however. Uh, we know what the goal is. Java everywhere, every time you are forced to install Java on your computer, you see that it runs 3 billion devices everywhere from your electrical toothbrush to the mission critical big iron uh, servers. So if you bought your girlfriend this little vibrating thing, it runs Java. <laughs> <laughs> A phone. <laughs> so, obsession. Obsession is the bad sister of devotion. Um, look at this guy. In his red t-shirt, you know, he's in some company. Um, Evidently, he's Drinker's PM. <laughs> Same guy, a few years later. <laughs> see, he's happy, um, probably because, because he's achieved some engineering breakthrough and the bottle is empty. Again, the same guy, not afraid of some you know, physical challenges, not just sitting at the computer or you know, elbow deep in the warp drive. Um, yeah doing something. And again, the same guy now working under harsh conditions, he's bold, he's not afraid of, you know, these bolts or whatever. So you may ask, what the fuck he is showing us here? Pictures from Babylon 5? <laughs> <laughs> um, this guy is more in common with a pearl death than you may think. Don't know if P5P or the six hacker or some what developer, look at this. This guy <laughs> in his red t shirt. <coughs> yeah, and I Nicholas, <laughs> you were the first one to sign up for this talk, so you've got to, to get a special class. <laughs> He's in company, he has his ale before him, and he wears a red t shirt. Here, you may not see the guy in the red t shirt, except you look at the better version of, of this picture, you look in the bottle, in the mirror image, um, the bottle is empty, and actually you have here a major engineering breakthrough because it's um, Jason Path, I think, passing some unit tests in Perl 6. On Carl, Carl Messack is here, so it's a picture from him. Here, this Perl guy, um, in his red t-shirt, <laughs> traveling from Austria to Frankfurt by bike uh, for the YAPC Frankfurt. You know, I don't know, the teleporter was broken or so. <laughs> He's not afraid of physical challenges. And this guy in his red t-shirt is doing some dangerous thing just for the sake of it. Yeah, I think it's schwer. I'm not pretty really sure about it. So all from the programs. Yeah, well. Imagine, hallucination is the bad sister of imagination. Now imagine the ship, and I want to make absolutely clear we know what this metaphorism means, the ship. The ship is not your Perl interpreter, the ship is not the Perl interpreter, or all Perl interpreters' mm -hmm. usage of Perl in a company. The ship is Perl, and don't bother me with, do you mean Perl 5 or Perl 6? Perl, on a global scale, usage of Perl worldwide. And now imagine the ship with text on it. Yeah? First episode. Oh, Scotty, what are you going to do? Well, we are going to tweak the warp drive and then we could, you know, elbow deep in antimatter gives me a tickling feeling. Okay. <laughs> Next episode. Scotty, what are you going to do today? Well, again, warp drive. No, we will uh, tune the life support system so we may sustain gamma radiation levels from a supernova. Oh, why would you need that? Well, imagine if the whole Klingon fleet would chase us. Yes, we could flee there and they couldn't follow. Oh, you intend to en engage the whole Klingon fleet? No, but imagine if we did. <laughs> so, imagine this series. It would end after two or three episodes. Mm -hmm. Yes, then boredom, finito. Now, if you think I make fun of you, you. as the manager, think of that. <laughs> Imagine there is only the bridge, only the captain and the officers and so on. Someone says, engage, nothing else. 
<laughs> Someone says, okay, that, that would be the first episode all would survive. Best of all worlds. Because in another episode, oh, we have an incoming missile, raise the defect deflector shields. No. <laughs> yeah. I've heard something, I don't know what it means. They haven't been unit tested. Yeah, so if the sirens up, they cannot go up. So so maybe if we put off the siren, yes. no cliffhanger there. <laughs> and now imagine you have one of the best vessels out there, and you finally intend to use it because someone said, "Okay, let's visit the galaxy." Because we could. Yeah. So others watching it from Starfleet. Hey, they got the old lady going. <laughs> Oh, it has transport, why? So, now, the most important slide. It may not look like that. Everything was fun up to now. <laughs> but um, this is really important. Ask yourself, listen to your inner voice. Do you want to be on a ship? Keep floating around, ever improving her? Or do we want to take her to the stars? That's the question. Even if you do not intend to leave the machine room forever, yeah, do you want to be on a machine room that is, you know, on a ship that's floating around and never engaging someone, never doing something? So, what's it going to be? You answer me. Because if you give me the wrong answer, <laughs> the talk stops here. <laughs> yes. So, no, we have no time. To say to the stars. Obviously, because they're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, focus. We need a goal. Pearl needs a goal. It has no goal. These are no valid goals. Another Pearl related web page. I've heard it from someone from even the marketing committee. Uh, we need no new aggregator or something. That's not a valid goal. The next feature in Pearl. No, that's not a valid goal. Fixing that long standing bug, even that is not a valid goal for her. So, hearing voices. See, Mozilla take, the, take back the web. You know the situation with Netscape, then came Microsoft, crushed it, and then came Mozilla Foundation, take back the web. That was one goal put in a slogan Linux, world domination fast. You know, it sounds like the German Mark in die ganze Welt. <laughs> but it has, uh, it has uh, you know, humor, note to it, and you can always say, ah, oh, it was fun. But world domination fast. And Java, we, we heard about. So, now you have this, and then comes this. <laughs> um, I know we don't have time, but, uh, well, bear with me. Uh, this one, I think you do not know him, but uh, you have seen the... Uh, fifth of six, soon to be seven Star Wars, mo Star Wars movies that came second, the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back, yes, you've seen it? So, Hoth, Ice Planet, the white being in fur that tried to eat Luke Skywalker, that's him. And, uh, well, they finished the movie, he got no job, so he started to work here for Microsoft, for change, and, um, yeah, made it to upper management. Obviously, it's still too hot on this planet. <laughs> so, and this species is linguistically impaired. So, uh, I will translate it to you because we, we ran it through our translator at the company. The topic is developers. Um, developers, more developers, even more developers, as many developers as you can get. Wait, the exclamation mark. Uh, I mean it. Uh, <laughs> as I said, developers, yeah, and so on. I've, I've forgotten the rest. <laughs> okay, despite making fun of it, the man is right. Everything I wanted to tell you in my first talk, which I scratched, was there are too few of us. That's the problem. So, multiple personalities. <clears throat> there is something like an attention economy. Attention is a scarce resource. Every human has just so much of it. And projects companies, whoever is competing for that attention. Every person brought to Pearl counts because we got their attention if we got it in a sustainable fashion even better. Developers are good, of course. Opinion leaders are better because they multiply 
the potential impact. Again, there is an attention economy. If someone would, anyone would like to tell you, oh, we do not compete, we are just, you know, sitting there and fighting and the others, we will ebony and ivory, living in perfect harmony. So, shoot him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Break his legs, that will teach him. No, no physical violence, please. That was just fun, but it should be, it should be made perfectly clear that uh, that's not correct. So, <coughs> opinion leaders are not always human. Opinion leaders may be, you know, web pages, indica, indi uh, indices, and so on. What we hear, what we see here is um, from langpop.com, language popularity, Perl is here. Uh, then we have the C sharp, Python, and so on, PHP, and yeah, the big guys. Okay, here. We have the tube index. Again, Perl here. Wow. Python, of course. And we see there's about double the usage, and then it goes up. Actually, should someone have felt now the urge to tell me, oh, that index is irrelevant. It doesn't show uh, what language is best. You might want to zip it, because that would make, uh, have made you have no fears. It's exactly what they say on that page. This index is not meant to show the best language or so. This index is meant for something completely different. But this one, this is what they show on the page. And if you see here, index can be used, blah, 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 to check your programming skills, or to make a strategic decision about what programming language should be adopted when starting to build a new software system. So, um, you want to... You really want to be here, at least at a place where PHP today is. The difference between you and me is I know how to get there. So, a therapy. This is basically one of two slides which I will use in the so-called after math talk, um, uh, which will be after, after this, uh, this one. Um, because up to now we've talked very abstract on a high level goal and strategy and so on and one has to formulate these things that put it in some you know concrete actions and as every mental disorder it starts with a therapy so you can and should do search engine optimization pushing Perl up in the tube index is trivial you just have to read how this uh, index is built and this index is built by searching for programming language programming uh, frags in the various search engines. Now, you, might, you may feel, ah, that's cheating if I write it on my pages. And so, no, it's not. Because, uh, you know, even on Perl pages, uh, of the Perl Foundation of uh, the Enlightened Perl Organization, <laughs> you have a hard time to find that frags. And if you see the, you know, Iron Man blog or something like that, well, at least put in a template, you know, blog about Perl programming and stuff, and then you have it. So that's <coughs> one of the things you could do. Another thing is, if you intend to write some documentation, which is meant for another already Perl programmer, Write or improve the docs for newbies instead. There's more than enough of these. Actually, I will talk about it um, in, the, in the other, other um, session. Um, I'm horrified by the quality of the, you know, entrance level documentation there is for Perl. Perl FAQ one, it's hilarious. I, I thought it's, <coughs> it's meant to be, you know, some kind of joke, but it isn't. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's catastrophic. So, thanks for now. I would welcome it if you can, could join me in the second talk. And, yeah, well, have a nice time listening to the other lectures.